Hello, I'm Ron Murray. In 1976, the government announced that a high dam would be built at Clyde. And two years later, in November 1978, I took the camera and photographed every business in the main street of Cromwell so that I could keep a record of what the place looked like. Let's now go down memory lane and revisit these places and uh, just see what the place looked like uh, in those days uh, so very long ago. We'll start at the northwest corner of the uh, main street of Cromwell and that's uh, at Alan Stoll's International Garage which he used to service cars and also farm vehicles. This building and uh, a few years later burnt to the ground. Next door was Ron Usher's uh, skin store. He used to buy wool and skins from the farmers in the adjoining area and uh, export those overseas. Then we come to a well-known landmark, Wrights and NMA's grain store. This store was built about 1955 uh, and uh, the farmers in the Upper Clutha district used to send all the grain here to be treated uh, and cleaned. Uh, at this present time, in April 1995, the building is being uh, demolished and will be taken up to Christchurch and re-erected and used for another purpose. Then further down the street we, came to, we come to a very old building we always used to know as Eddie Hayes' builder's shop. In the very early days uh, it was a building that was used for wagoners accommodation where the wagoners would sleep there and eat across the road at the Victoria Hotel. Uh, this building has recently been sold and, at the same, and is in the state, state of being demolished right at the present time. Right across the street is the Victoria Hotel. It's been on the uh, same site for 130 odd years. The initial building was uh, beautifully done in stone but in later years that was all plastered over. Next door to that uh, is the old Masonic Hall which was built round about 1905 by the late William Gear. Uh, it's beautifully done in stone and has stood very well over the intervening years. Coming further down the street is the Caltech garage which operated both a service station, uh, a motor repair department and also had a man on the field repairing farmers tractors uh, on their farms. Then we come to the old blacksmith shop built by Robert Wishart in 1880 with his resident upstairs. In later years he took his son George Wishart into partnership and when the advent of motor traffic became uh, pronounced he opened the motor garage next door. And here's the place we knew as Wishart's garage with the old smithy in the background. At this particular time it's owned by Melmore Motors as the uh, grandson Doug Wishart had sold it several years previously. Next door to that was a mining village complex built by John Anderson with replicas um, of the, the Bank of New Zealand, the blacksmith shop uh, and one of the local hotels. Then heading further down the street towards the post office uh, we come to a fairly large house which was uh, used by Harold Popperwell uh, as a hairdressing salon. Initially he had had a, a shop further down the street but it had been sold. Coming further down the main street we come to the Cromwell Post Office. The original post office was on the site in 1869. Since then the post office has been uh, rebuilt in stone and then remodelled again at a later date. <coughs> Immediately across the street we come to Bruce Jackson's Draper's shop. This is a, a beautifully built shop uh, in stone with a small room next door which at that particular time was occupied by N&ES Patterson land agents of the uh, The 
store was initially built in 1918 for a grocer Henry Bowie. As we progress down the street we come to the Bank of New Zealand. This is the third building in Cromwell the bank has had and is actually built on the site of Wishart's old blacksmith shop. It was done in local stone and uh, uh, quite, a, quite a well finished building. Immediately next door we come to Cromwell Pharmacy run by Robert Cox. His father Basil Cox operated the shop uh, for about 50 years before him. Uh, and uh, in the early days it was run by uh, a German chemist called Henry Hotop. But the interesting thing is this building started off as being the original Bank of New Zealand. <coughs> and further down the street uh, at the Colonial Bank had a bank but it went bankrupt for around about 1895 and the Bank of New Zealand shifted down there. In this photograph we have uh, a side view of the Cromwell Pharmacy, um, which was double story, and upstairs Dick O'Kane, the dental surgeon, had his rooms. Now to the right we have Wrights and NMA Stock Agents Building. <coughs> this uh, was the Cromwell Hotel in the very early days, uh, and since that time has become a billiard room, uh, tea room, and uh, before Wrights and NMA bought it was the printing office of the Cromwell Argus. Then we come further down the street, uh, we come to the National Bank of New Zealand. This initially was the Bank of New South Wales about 1880, <coughs> and uh, in later years it was taken over by the National Bank. And to the right of that is a fairly well known building called London House. It was built in the 1885s uh, for R. R. Henry and Company, uh, who were project produce merchants and storekeepers uh, and they use it to supply the local gold miners. <coughs> Later on it was ta used by Tall Boys as a draper's shop, uh, then Jelly Brothers um, who kept it uh, until round about 1960. <coughs> then um, it was used for Jack Ferris as a furniture shop um, then Leo Mangus and when he shifted up the street it was uh, being used for by Bob Howard uh, as a radio shop. Next we come to the Golden Age Hotel. The original building was a small uh, wooden building on the site <coughs> and at the time of the dredging boom in 1903 it was rebuilt and faced with stone. Since then it's had a, a, a large number of owners and uh, about 15 or 20 years ago uh, a more modern bar was built on to the right hand corner. You'll see it there fairly plainly. It doesn't really blend in with the old building at all. Then we go across the street again and come to uh, the building operated by the Algeti New Zealand Limited who are also stock agents. <coughs> in 1869 uh, a wooden shop was built here by D.A. Jolly and he operated it as a family store with members of his family uh, until round about 1950 when he sold out and several other grocers had the place and finally uh, they were getting New Zealand bought it and in 1978 they were the owners. <coughs> now to the right of this is a discount store operated by Colin Edgar. Um, this, is, this building is a particularly old one and uh, was known as Victoria's store in the 1870s and when it was demolished it was found to be of a very poor construction and certainly wouldn't meet the uh, present day local bylaws. As we come further down the street there are two buildings in this photograph. Uh, the one on the left is the Cromwell Free Trade Butchery which has quite a history. It was built by Captain Jackson Barry in 1869 uh, and he also became the local mayor. <coughs> it passed through several hands and at one stage uh, was positioned on the other side of the street uh, and then brought back in the 1930s and uh, has been used by three generations of the Sanders family. First Charlie Sanders in the 1940s 
then Ralph Sanders, uh, who sold to his two sons, Bill and Charlie. Now, to the right of that is a small building which Bill Sanders used several years ago, uh, and this would be during the Second World War, as a taxi depot and as a fruit and produce shop. Subsequently, Stronic Morris stock firm used the property, and at the time the photo was taken, it was used as a steak bar by a man called Roy. Now we come to two further buildings. The building on the left hand side is the double story one, and that used to be the Colonial Bank of New Zealand, which, uh, as I mentioned, became bankrupt, and the Bank of New Zealand uh, took that over. Uh, it was when it was uh, when they built a new bank further up the street that vacated that. It was used by uh, once in one case a tourist operation, uh, and then Bob Howard, the radio man, used it for a short time too. Now to the right of that is the Hotel Cromwell. This was a fairly large building and was initially built by Hallenstein Brothers uh, as a large grocery store with the um, owner's accommodation upstairs. But about 1885, Hallensteins decided to uh, discontinue business in Cromwell uh, and pulled out of the place. And then in 80, around about 1895, a, a publican called Matt Dawson bought the buildings, um, took, the, took a, a, a hotel license from a closed hotel across the street and uh, turned it into what was known initially as Dawson's Hotel and in that years it became Hotel Cromwell. Then on the very corner here we come to what is, was known as Scott's Bakery. It was initially founded by a man, uh, J.L. Scott, who did uh, quite a lot of mining speculation and gold dredges in the early years. And when he died around about 1918, his son Elf took it over. And uh, when he died uh, during the war, uh, the business was closed down, but then New Zealand Road Services took it over as a depot uh, for their buses on the trips to Dunedin. It's interesting to note when the building was finally demolished, the original ovens were found to be still left in the building. Now we're at the bottom of the main street. We move across uh, the street where the bridge is located and work our way up the southern side. The first thing to look at up on the other side of the street is the Cromwell War Memorial uh, to the soldiers from the First World War. It comprises a monument, an old field gun and gardens that have been really beautifully kept. Then we come to a large building used by game packers for the processing of deer. Uh, during the wartime years it was used for processing rabbits which had uh, been caught uh, in the upper Clutha Valley and was supplied daily by several trucks that went up the valley. This scheme didn't pay very well either. But the interesting thing is the building started its life off as Lane's Lemonade Factory uh, around about 1938. So it's had quite a number of owners and quite a, a number of uses. Next door we have a very large garage on the left hand side which uh, New Zealand Road Services used to park their two buses in. And next to that uh, a fairly large house on an extremely small section which we always knew was Roy Congleton's house. During the uh, depression years a mechanic called Roy Congleton established uh, a service station and a motor garage and a dwelling alongside. So this is the dwelling, now we'll have a look at the service station. And here's the service station which uh, at the time the photograph was taken was operated by Alan Beatty. <coughs> Next door was a large concrete garage which was used uh, as Congleton's garage for a number of years. Uh, over the years it's had uh, a number of owners in the mechanical trade and uh, and this particular date was used by Cromwell panel beaters uh, for panel beating and painting of motor cars. Then we come to the Cromwell News Agency shop. Um, 
This was established by Bob Laurie around about 1938 and has had a number of owners since. Uh, inside there was also a men's hairdressing salon and local radio dealer John Bilton uh, used portions of the shop uh, to sell his radio sets. Further up the street we come to Leckie's restaurant uh, with residents upstairs. It's a particularly old building and in the early days uh, was used by a painter who lived upstairs and had his paint and wallpaper in the shop down below. Then we come to the public library uh, and also the local council chambers and in the back of this building they also had a room for the Cromwell Brass Band. A building that was put up round about 1920. Then we come to uh, Mansour's Drapers Limited shop. It's a fairly modern shop, very well built and uh, built actually on the site of the old Cromwell Argus building. Then moving up the street we come to a cluster of three, three small shops which we always knew as Shibes shops. Uh, at one stage there were three stock agents occupying these. One, each one had a room each and they used it as an office uh, to conduct their business. Uh, in later years it's had uh, quite a few uses. At the, this particular time Jim Deal, the local solicitor from Alexandra had a room there. In the middle, Anderson's Jewelers operated, and on the left-hand side, there was initially a baby's wear shop, and in later years, a small plant shop. Then we come to a tea rooms. Um, in my younger days, it was known as Joe Roberts's Tea Rooms. Uh, initially started out as a house, and was converted <coughs> to a tea rooms by a man called Joe Roberts, who worked on the railway, but was colour blind and uh, uh, therefore couldn't read the railway signals and had to get a job where that didn't really matter. So we opened up tea rooms there, and over the years, this building has had a number of owners. <coughs> Next door, we have the shop on the left belonging to Belts Family Butchery. Uh, which was established by a local butcher, Graham, or commonly known as Ding Dong Bell. And on the right hand side we had the old power board office, which was a fairly rough construction, and at that particular time was uh, rented by Arthur Bungar, the ladies hairdresser. Moving further up the street we come to Jolly's Grain Store. This uh, grain store was built in 1903 by D.A. Jollies and Sons, used for storing grain and other materials that weren't carried in the shop across the street. Uh, in later years it was used as a doctor's surgery and next door to that uh, was an old shop which had been rebuilt in a modern sort of a style and was operated by Brian Williamson, the electrician. Then we have the Otago Savings Bank building on the left, or Trust Bank Otago as it is commonly known now. The building initially uh, was a depot for taxis run by two men, Law and Payne. But when they went out of business, uh, the bank bought it, converted it into a banking chamber. And on the right hand side <coughs> was an again another very old building which uh, in 1960 was used by a man Peter Hosking as a bicycle repair shop. Uh, prior to that was used by a man Denny Carhill as a shoe repairer and uh, at the time uh, this photograph was taken it was used by Bodkin solicitors Alexandra for uh, an office and also Broad Christie accountants from Intercargill. Now we come to the site of Hoskins Draper's shop, which uh, when it was used uh, as a hardware shop burnt down and uh, a fresh shop was built on the site. On the left hand side uh, the portion of the shop was used by a lady hairdresser and on the right hand side uh, a well known firm of accountants Hayward and Bracegirdle from Belpluta. Then we come to the ladies restroom on the left hand side with the men's toilets immediately adjoining. 
and on the right hand side uh, an accounting office built uh, by Fred Dunn who later died and uh, uh, at this particular time used by uh, an accounting partnership Peter Mead and Alistair Stark. There are three businesses in this photograph. Uh, on the left uh, there's a woman's fashion shop, uh, another one, uh, another shop which was operated by a woman who sold specialised jewellery and uh, uh, that nature of material and on the right hand side a small shop put there by Robert Cox and he transferred uh, his photographic side of the business over there and had a girl who operated from there. Then we come to a, a particularly old building uh, it was initially known as Barry's Grain Store but in the early days uh, it housed a, a skating rink for roller skating uh, and late, uh, after that it was used by a taxi proprietor named Bert Keyes for a depot and uh, at the time this photograph was taken was used by Ken Feely as a grocery store. On the right hand side it was a much smaller shop which had been done up in a more modern fashion uh, operated by Dove's foot Footwear Company. Then we come to a, a very small fish and chip shop on the left hand side in a fairly old part of the building. The Riverview Restaurant building is a modern construction built around about 1960 by a local man called uh, Percy Johnson. Uh, it's had several owners over the years but uh, was very well appointed. Uh, you could get cups of tea and meals in the back and overlook the river and uh, in the front, the lollies, ice cream and fruit. Then we come to a four square discount store operated uh, by Neville Hucklebridge and his wife Helen. Uh, this shop started off as a cash grocery by the late Adam Reed, but since then it has been added on to. Immediately next door was the Otago Central Electric Power Board office and on the floor below street level was a large repair shop for doing uh, implement repairs. Then we come to a large uh, and very old building which was initially used as a paint shop. It, been it had been remodeled, uh, used as a local branch of the TAB and after that as a living residence. On the left hand side was a very small building uh, which put up as a hairdressing salon run by two local women. Then we come to um, a small crib which was owned by uh, the late George Burroughs, who used to be uh, a motor mechanic in Cromwell. Uh, it was built uh, of one or two army huts and was really of inferior construction. But uh, several years ago, uh, two women opened it up as the Ponderosa Garden Centre, but it lasted only a few months. Then we come to a building erected by Dave Betts, a building contractor in Cromwell before the Second World War. It's a fairly, it's a fairly old building and uh, uh, was used for many years by the late Jack Gibson and at the present time in 1978 by uh, Cromwell and Southern Lakes Builders and Funeral Services. Dave Betts' uh, personal residence was built next door. Quite a, uh, quite a well done house but on a, on a particularly small section and when you went out the back door you were looking over the riverbank. Uh, at that time uh, I took the photograph, uh, retired farmer George Sanders and his wife lived there. Although I took most of my photographs on a Sunday to avoid having cars obscuring the buildings, it must be realised that the main street of Cromwell was a very busy place and it was quite frequently very difficult to get even a car park. Then we come to a very old cottage uh, <coughs> which had been built before the turn of the century and was used to house the groomen for the uh, uh, horses that uh, from the from the uh, hotel that was on the opposite side of the street. 
known as the uh, Globe Hotel. Uh, it was a, this was a, a very poorly constructed building, and uh, at the time the f I took the photograph, it was tenanted. Then we come to a legal office uh, operated by Broderick Parcell, Mill and Howley. It's where I used to work. That's my old A40. But this building started off life uh, before the war as the Globe Bakery. Uh, and at that stage, Cromwell had three baker shops, so it was quite obvious they couldn't all survive. Uh, then it was closed for a while and uh, uh, reopened by a man called Jack Ferris, uh, who dealt in furniture and furnishings. It was after that that it was uh, remodeled and used as a legal office. Now, further up the street opposite the Victoria Hotel, and we come to the carpet, carpet and uh, curtain shop operated by Leo Mangus. This was a fairly new building. He had his living quarters upstairs and the shop was downstairs. And finally we come to the Cromwell Borough Memorial Hall, built as a memorial to the servicemen of the Second World War. Now there it is. All the businesses and buildings in the main street in Cromwell in 1978. I hope for some of you it brings back quite a few memories. And what better way to finish the program to, than to have a look at the famous photograph that we've, we all have always liked and always viewed, the meeting of the waters uh, in Cromwell.